we we tried early on baked lighting. Mm-hmm. I came directly from Ghost Giant, and on Ghost Giant I baked all the levels in the game. Uh, but it proved to be much easier to do that on Ghost Giant because it's a much more stylized game and smaller levels and so on. We have uh, had to so, have a lot, of, a lot of life. sorry. Just I know you had a, a kind of strict a lighting budget that we were like, oh, more lights here. Like, uh, can we paint this thing with more lights? Like, yeah, then we gotta cut this I'll thing. I'll talk it's like... more about that soon. Yeah, so I just based <laughs> on my frustration <laughs> oh, with <no>. optimizing. <laughs> I don't know why why Leo turned into Bane there, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's light. laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, so yeah, yeah, Olo, yeah, yeah. I'll talk about that soon. Yeah. Uh, so... Again, I'm sorry for everything. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> uh, so we tried out big lighting, but we came to the cl- conclusion that when we had so huge levels and we had so many dark parts yeah. uh, in the level, it, it proved to be a bit too like memory-wise. The textures needed to be huge if mm. we wanted to uh, have the detail that we wanted. But also another like huge thing for us is that we wanted to keep the specular highlights on the meshes because that's like one of the key parts in our art style. Uh, but when we bake uh, uh, these uh, disappear in the dark parts, which is uh, a shame, we thought. So we were like, hmm, let's try dynamic lighting instead. So we actually have f- fully dynamic lighting. And the way we uh, solve the performance performance issues that comes with that is with the number a number of solutions actually uh, maybe i can go through them so one of the big things that we did early was that we we turned off all the shadows on all the environment meshes in the levels so n- none of these meshes that you see here have shadows actually turned on uh, let me just hide this uh, this uh, so what we did instead to fix that, because having no shadows is not so nice, especially in a level like this. Uh, so what we did was just combine the right color. We actually created what we call the shadow blocks. It's like a shadow proxy, so it's a cube that's set to shadows only, as you can see here. Uh, but it's actually just a cube and then we have a board cube it looks <laughs> yeah. kind of like a bit ominous in the in the back in the back yeah, it does. and so with these uh, we we placed these in the level to fake the the shadows coming from the the buildings uh, and since the levels have quite a lot of meshes and shapes uh, you don't really see all the straight shadows coming from these boxes uh, here you can see how it looks without and there is with oh wow huge difference yeah uh, and on top of that we have a restricted uh, shadow distance uh, on the sunlight since we don't need so long distance because of the fog i mean you you can see it there. You can see the shadow disappearing. Like, you see? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, one second. Um, and another thing we did to push the performance even more is uh, we made a in-house script that we call the color light script. Mm-hmm. What it does is it calls the kind of like painting with shadows or like it. it I think it also adds this kind of painterly feeling that you are using these cubes to create the shadows. Yeah, like in, instead of how are these cubes actually making the shadows? Like, are they? Is it, oh, is it literally cubes are blocking out the light and that's what you're doing? Like they're just... Yeah, the cubes are blocking out the light, they're just but, literally... it, okay. but they're set to shadows only, so you don't see the you actual see. cubes. I see. Uh, but they simulate the shadow. And with that, we kind of paint the shadow map of the level. 
because it's much more performant doing it this way than having shadows on the actual buildings and it looks I mean, you don't see, I, I, I don't think anyone would have noticed, to be honest. Uh, and you can place them in a really specific way. So if I want it to be a shadow over there, I can oh, just place a cube. But actually the building is like going over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's so it's nice... very ominous to just be that the players walking through this world, not knowing that there are these giant floating cubes <laughs> yeah. all, all around them. Yeah. <laughs> all the real antagonist behind it all. <laughs> exactly. It's the actually very fitting since the antagonist is a, a, a dark cube. Yes, exactly. <laughs> owned by the queen. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this, the plot thickens. Uh, so um, just uh, back to this cool thing yeah. that I talked about earlier. So with this without this all the lights and the levels or not all of them but like i don't remember the specific number but like 30 of them were rendered at the same time and that was not so performant so we created this uh, cool light script that pulls the light at a specific distance so you can see this is the transition from where the light is being faded and this is the like the inner ring here the distance when the light is supposed to be at 100 percent okay so you essentially customized the uh, all the lighting added more like features to, or more control yeah uh, we we kind of had to because of performance but anyways, this also proved to be a nice visual feature as i mm. said earlier in some levels when we wanted the lights to fade in when you got closer to push this threat what do you say? What's the word? The theater, yeah. theatrical feeling. Uh, yeah. And when we worked in HRP, most of our lights were actually point lights with shadows, uh, which is uh, quite expensive. Um, so what <coughs> we have done in URP instead is we have changed all the point lights to spotlights instead. Uh, <laughs> Because URP also did not have shadows on point lights. And right. We we want we, we needed shadows. You know, All right. Lights. Yeah. Uh, so we combined having uh, spotlights, and then on some places we used these uh, point lights with shadows off uh, as some extra fluff, you know, to because without it, it looks a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so how many of these lights were you able to have like in a scene at one point? Did you have to shut off certain lights when moving into, did you have to unload lights and reload lights uh, specifically for the uh, Switch version as well? Um, we, I mean, we turned off some like specific lights in the Switch version that were just like there for only like extra visual stuff uh, so we yeah we turned off some which some lights for switch but also for uh, gen 4 like playstation and xbox uh, but this color system worked really well so we didn't have to do so much on that mm. front uh, because when you're outside this range the light is turned off and it's not uh, being rendered at all okay uh, so with this in place we could have more lights but we were really restricted with our use of lights as Olaf mentioned earlier like we I wish I could like place lights everywhere but uh, we only had the lights where it was really necessary to, the, to guide the player it was a really great example also where like technical limitations uh, make makes the visual uh, makes the presentation more more uh, clean and and uh, especially on switch if you play on a small screen it's nice to have just this like, like not so much messy stuff going on and and, uh, and I, I feel like you really like Utilizing the uh, lights in, uh, the best way you can when you just have a few to to um, uh, that you're allowed to use <laughs> per yeah. scene. Yeah, you, you use them wisely. Uh, yeah, you do. Epic and, dude in chat just said, "Lights are the bane of my existence. I never know how to make it performance and have a well lit scene, but this is giving me a lot of good ideas. So thanks, Leo. Uh, nice. <laughs> that makes me you're happy. Helping yeah. the community. Uh, and uh, going from this to maybe ambient lighting because it's related to what I mm. talked about this now like because we couldn't have so many lights like in this corridor uh, it's quite dark uh, 
here. Not not super dark now because of the ambient lighting. Uh, so because of uh, the amount of lights we could have was not super many. We had to make sure that you still could see in the shadow parts of the level. So we worked a lot with uh, the ambient lighting. Uh, one second, I'm just gonna find this. So what we did is what we have this sky gradient that works as the ambient lighting in the scene. Uh, and what it does is like the top color uh, lights the top of the meshes, the yeah. middle color uh, lights the side of the meshes and the mm -hmm. bottom color lights the bottom parts of the meshes, as you can see here. Uh, and this played a big role in like making the dark parts of the levels pop, uh, adding this uh, artistic feel to it, kind of. Uh, 